All right. Well, Amy, it's good to have you here. Uh, I will start with um, just getting my presentation queued here. Um, okay. Do you see my Canva here? Did I yeah. Just... So while Melissa is doing that, I'll just um, welcome everybody to Family First Wednesdays. Um, today we have Melissa Winger. She is um, from Circle of Parents, and she's going to be talking to us today about um, those support groups, um, what they are, how to get involved, and maybe even how to um, start one um, in your community. The other thing I want to mention is we have the Lifeline notebooks available on our website, mtpeernetwork.org. Uh, um, those are a great resource for you or families that you know or that you work with. Um, and I think that's it. I will send it over to Melissa. Oh, we have one new person here. So my name's Melissa Winger, um, and I am the state contract holder for the Circle of Parents Network of, of Parent Support Groups in the state of Montana. It'll be hard for me. I might switch and accidentally say Circle of Security sometimes because I also teach Circle of Security classes, and that means that when I present, sometimes the wrong thing comes out, and I apologize. Uh, so I'll give you just a little bit of an introduction about myself. Uh, and my colleague, Hannah uh, Cherry, who runs this program with me as my teammate. So I, by training, am a marriage and family therapist and uh, practiced for about six years before I had my first child. And when he was about six months old, I decided to kind of take a hard left turn and um, I became a stay-at-home mom for a little while. And uh, that was in New New Mexico, where my son was born. And when I moved to Montana, I was like nine months pregnant when I moved here. And I was in a doctor's appointment with uh, my daughter. We were like six months postpartum. We just moved here, not six months, six weeks postpartum. And I was told about this coalition that was starting in, in Beaverhead County, and they really needed someone who understood child development and who could help connect parents to resources. And uh, even though that was like the worst time for me to get back in the workforce, I decided to, to give it a shot. And I, from that point on, co-founded the Early Childhood Coalition of Newark County here um, in Dillon. And in that work, I was introduced to the Circle of Parents work on like a statewide Zoom call for, um, it's kind of like a prep for, like strengthening families, April, you know, how they had blue April here. And, uh, and I heard someone from the Butte 4 c saying that they were, they had funding to expand the program. And I jumped on it as fast as I could and was trained quickly with Hannah, my, my colleague, uh, shown there. And we were just parent leaders of a group that we started here in Dillon for postpartum moms. She and I both had had some pretty significant experiences with uh, postpartum mental health after we had our our firstborns. I experienced a lot of postpartum anxiety and postpartum depression, and she as well experienced similar things. And we really felt like it was important for parents to have a place to feel like that was normal and kind of a, a place to feel supported by people who really understood that. And so we we started the group under that premise and we have welcomed it to any postpartum mom in our community. And about two years after starting that, Heather Stinson, who used to run the program, called me and said, this program is my baby and I, I am leaving my job and I'm not able to keep it with the next organization I'm going to. So can you take care of my baby for me as I'm leaving? And so about a year ago, when I was seven months pregnant with my third baby, I said, sure, let's take another big life change. So Hannah and I now co-facilitate and manage the groups throughout the state for Circle of Parents, and we have loved it. It has been a sharp learning curve to be able to connect with all of these groups throughout the state, um, but we've loved the the journey, and, and each, each time I invite something new into my life, it has been kind of an explosion of wonderful. So uh, I'm excited to share today. So the Circle of Parents program is a, is a nationwide organization that is in many states. So I'm not sure if you're sharing this, if my view here is in front of 
the states here, but um, move it down here. So, uh, so it's in 19 different states in the U.S. They just added Oregon, which is not lit up here, but Oregon is now uh, represented as of like last month, I think. And there's over 390 groups, but I bet you that is also out of date because new groups are added in different states all of the time. And they serve over 5,000 caregivers, 3,000 children um, are served in the child care programs from month to month. Uh, I know that groups have different folks come every every month as they're offered. And so we kind of have this influx of of new people always a part of the, the program. But in, in its simplest form, Circle of Parents is just a support group for parents who share similar life experiences. And um, I'll talk a little bit about the groups that we offer here in Montana, but these groups are different in every state and in every community. And there are a lot of groups all over. So Circle of Parents in Montana specifically, we have eight active groups right now, and they all serve different kinds of parents. And typically they're started because a parent or a couple of parents feel the need in their community for support for a particular um, demographic or a particular thing in their community and have reached out like myself, like I did, um, to, to get trained and to get a group going. And it's a pretty low barrier process to get a group started. So the groups that we have right now, we have a postpartum mom support group that um, I used to facilitate. I kind of handed over the reins to that as I've taken on the statewide role to other folks in my community. We also have just a mom's group for children in early childhood that's in Mineral County. We have, you know, families with children with special needs or special health care. Um, <clears throat> and we have probably three of those groups. We have parents with children specifically on the autism spectrum, uh, autism spectrum in Bighorn County, and they meet virtually every month. Uh, so if you know anyone who could use some support with that, that's an open group that because they meet virtually, anyone throughout the state can connect to that one. Um, and they are on a reservation. And I know a lot of the folks that are served in that group um, identify as, as being a, a Native American. And um, I know that that is a piece of some of the discussion that they have there, though I don't think that anyone who doesn't fit that uh, demographic would be excluded from, from being involved. Uh, they just have a pretty big geographic area that they want to serve, and they found the best uh, attendance and the best support by meeting virtually. They also have a Facebook group in Bighorn County for this group. That's just kind of an open call to anyone who has a struggle in the moment to reach out and get pretty immediate feedback there. Um, we have parents who uh, they themselves or their child have some kind of a disability or mental health challenge. We have foster and adoptive parent groups, and we also have a group that um, serves families who have been kind of connected with the CPS or foster system in some way on both ends. Uh, so the groups are, are pretty different uh, depending on what the parents and the community needs are. It's the process to become a group if you'd like and I can get you trained have room right now with my current funding to add three new groups this year if that is something that um, is desired and, and feasible for your community uh, please reach out to me and and I'd be happy to get you trained and, and to get that process started so the structure of the group off, sorry is, oh you kind of yeah. broke up a little bit before you said the three new groups was there anything right before that oh, yeah. Uh, so I have funding for three new groups here in, in Montana. So I can do that this year. And the process is pretty simple to get started. Really, you just reach out to me and talk about kind of the demographic. My funding specifications are that your group has to in some way serve children with a special health care need. And that could be based on parents' criteria that they might be at risk because of the parents' situation for for being um, a child with a special health care need or the child themselves could have that. So if you'd like to, to get a group started in your community, just reach out to me. It's a pretty simple process. Uh, and if I break up again, just let me know. I'm kind of hopping between two internet sources here, hoping that 
we have good service. Um, so the structure of a circle of parents group is that it's led by parents. So it's kind of like peer support and that it needs to be a shared experience and not like a provider at one level or or kind of it's there's not there shouldn't be a differential power differential between what's going on in the group so each group um, is ideally led by two parent leaders who understand and have a lived experience with whatever the group is and there's typically also a facilitator that works in some kind of an organization to house or anchor that in their community. So for uh, for Mineral County, for example, their facilitator works for public health. In uh, Cascade County, um, we have uh, an organization called the Peace Place that serves um, individuals with special health care needs and it's housed there. Um, in Missoula, uh, there's a therapy clinic that they that they are housed out of. So uh, it looks pretty different no matter the, I mean, depending on the community, uh, but typically there's some kind of a facilitator who works at an anchor organization who is trained in circle of uh, parents as well. And then always, this is a must to run a group, there's always childcare provided. And that just um, is, is part of our values that children also need to have a positive experience with what's going on. And parents need to be able to know that they can come without the worry that, that their children are not in a safe place or that the children finding care for them would be a barrier to participate. And in groups where there are children with special health care needs, um, the parameters are pretty specific about what that child care, um, the credentials of that child care look like, just so that people feel safe bringing their kiddos. And uh, the tasks that these parent leaders uh, take on are their marketing. They, they are the ones getting the word out. They're the ones talking to providers in their area. They're the ones who are uh, making flyers and passing them out. They're uh, they're kind of boots on the ground, making sure the word gets out in their community. They prepare the space, um, depending on what the group size is, they either order dinner or they make dinner. They get a budget each month for dinner, or some people meet during the day and provide lunch. Um, but you can always expect a meal to be fed there and uh, the parent leaders take care of that. Uh, they also are kind of in charge of arranging that childcare, making sure the quality of that childcare is, is uh, up to par. And they, they help lead that discussion, make sure other people feel welcome and comfortable, as well as collect data each month of, of who's coming so that we, um, we can keep that funding going. <laughs> and then um, if you have any questions, we have a pretty small group, you're welcome to just raise your hand there and ask too. I'm, I'm happy to, to, to answer any questions as we go too. So the mission statement of a circle of parents is listed here. Really the history of circle of parents support groups is that it's born out of a, a desire to eliminate child abuse and neglect. We really want to strengthen and, and empower parents so that even if they were raised in a situation that that wasn't ideal, that wasn't safe, or that wasn't um, something that would have taught them good skills to bring to their family, that, um, that they have a place of support and then the next generation can transition out of that pattern. And and the vision is that uh, we provide these parents with with skills of resiliency to uh, to help their children thrive and flourish, no matter where they as a parent have been and the challenges that they deal with. So the idea is that by providing parents with support, that we hopefully um, we hopefully can eliminate child abuse and neglect through through doing that. <clears throat> so the foundations of that are, are kind of to support parents so that, that we can prevent that child abuse and neglect. Uh, we, we believe strongly that families support mutual self-help and sharing ideas and sharing support by people who know that experience. A lot of the flyers you can look up on Facebook, there's Facebook groups all over the state and all over the country really for circle of parents. And a lot of the things that you'll see there will um, kind of hint at these three things to invite people in to say, you know, meet people like you, get support, get a night off, um, come learn about resources. And oftentimes these people become, they become bonded in almost like a family-like way in these groups because they, they really feel that sense of support from somebody who gets it, not from like a therapist or from a clinician or from, from someone who, uh, 
is outside of that experience looking in and telling them what they might need but from somebody who's gone through the gauntlet of like trying to get the right you know uh, the right services for their kiddo or to get into whatever provider it is or to get the right referral to this place or uh, to recognize what symptoms look like in yourself or someone else. Uh, so, so these three foundations you'll see in a lot of that marketing. If you, if you do, you know, just a quick search in your area, they'll invite people in by talking about what these look like. And our goal with this is that a circle of parents group becomes this positive, um, a factor for resilience, this protective factor against ACEs in each community that it's in, that no matter what's going on in those homes, no matter what's going on with those parents, um, for those families, that this is one area of their life where they can find a safe community, where they can find a space that's, that's welcoming, that fosters really, really, um, supportive feelings, uh, and protective factors against that. So my next slide is a video and um, I wanna check my time here and also make sure my internet connection is working for this. So uh, just to reiterate what these groups can do based on um, uh, being a protective factor. So let's see here if this works. Oh, I gotta replay it. Let's see here. Can you hear that okay? No? No, I can't hear it. Can you, Amy? Let me see here. We may, may have to, I don't know that I'm tech savvy enough to identify and diagnose what this problem is. So I'll just give you a gif, a gist of what was there. So just a second here, get back into present. So this video basically talks about the four pillars. I don't know if you guys have been familiar with the, oh gosh, the Hope Institute, um, but the four building blocks of hope, um, are uh, here are providing social engagement and um, positive relationships, safe, equitable, nurturing environments. And let me see here. I forget what the fourth one is, but it's on my next slide, so we'll get there. So we're really just hoping by providing a safe and equitable environment, where relationships are there, and social engagement is. Um, just kind of built into the process so that people can have a really strong sense of protection and resiliency against those ACEs and adverse childhood experiences that they may be walking into the room with. Uh, I apologize about that video. So our model works heavily that each group that anyone attends will represent five protective factors each time they come in. So we're hoping that every single group across the country, if those individuals are trained correctly, can walk in and, and see parental resilience, that they can see that those parents are working hard to, um, to no matter what life looks like at home, to take care of themselves and take care of each other. Also social connections. We believe strongly that by providing a sense of connectedness among the people who attend, uh, that we um, we provide a, a network of a family almost for those people and, and that those people have a sense of shared support that feels really concrete because it's lived and they understand. Uh, a connection from somebody who doesn't quite get it just isn't as strong as a connection from somebody who, who's been there. So at, they would also, if they walked into any par uh, circle of parents group throughout the country would hopefully get a knowledge of parenting uh, and child development. That while you're there sharing your experiences with each other, that there's a song that helped them potty train their kiddo, or there's a provider that taught them this thing that they they wanted to share about their child's social emotional development. Um, that they'll get some kind of a concrete education from what they're they're um, bringing to the group and getting from the group. 
we also hope that there's concrete support in times of need. So if I have something come up and it's an emergency, could I call those people to watch my kiddo if I needed childcare? Could I call those people to drive me to the hospital or to, to help me just overcome this panic attack I'm having in the moment or to tell me that this isn't going to last forever and just be that person to call and and in a very similar way that uh, family support family peer support is and the peer support network in general that they will get that concrete support Uh, and also social emotional competence of children so that those kids interacting with each other in this really safe environment um, can learn to regulate their emotions um, through the child care and the child programming there too. So there's a neat way to remember this. I really like this graphic to remember these uh, five protective factors. You just use your hand here. So our thumb is a reminder of social emotional competence because this is one of the first ways that we learn to tell people what's going on emotionally with us is that I'm okay. Um, Our index figure is uh, knowledge of parenting and child development because your child's number one teacher. Um, Your middle finger is for social connections because the middle finger should never stand alone. I think that was funny. Um, And then your pinky finger signifies concrete support in times of need because it's the smallest and it needs the most support. Uh, And then parental resilience is your your ring finger here because uh, your first commitment needs to be to yourself as a parent to be able to even help others. So I really like this graphic and I share it when we do our trainings. So our groups are all open groups Um, throughout the state, no matter what the demographic serves, these groups are always open to whoever walks in. Uh, And and that means that the way that group feels and develops will constantly be in flux. Uh, And that can be a good thing and it can be a challenge at times. And they constantly go between, um, you know, this feeling of of forming that that people who come in are like, well, I'm still trying to fill you out. We're being really resourceful. We're kind of being open. Um, And then performing where maybe we're like really polite. We're like, oh, well, I'm not really sure who you are. I'm not sure what I can say here yet. I'm I'm not sure if everybody else is really experiencing the same things that I'm experiencing at home. Uh, And sometimes storming, sometimes going through conflicts or difficulties. Uh, Our group in Butte recently lost one of its parent leaders uh, to cancer. And they went through this period of time where they were all mourning together, where they had to learn what that that group looked like without her. And uh, she was an incredibly valuable person in all of their and their support networks. So learning how to kind of come together again as a group after something hard has happened, or uh, maybe you had a group where you were just really struggling. You brought a lot of your stuff to that group and your group was the brunt of, you know, what you were dealing with that day. And you have to come back the next time and, uh, and do some repair with that. And sometimes, and most of the time, I would say that groups are kind of in this norming stage where they uh, get each other and they know Kind of who the key players are that they can expect each time they come in and they they understand the environment they know the process of where they're going to drop their kiddo off that day and who who they're going to talk to and what's okay to share uh so because they're open groups i do feel like i need to give a caveat that that you may have a different group each time you come uh, and it might look a little bit different um i have kind of plowed through this especially since i didn't watch my seven minute video uh, but I would love to take any questions that you have uh, and certainly go back to anything that either my internet didn't allow me to, to share effectively or maybe something that, that you'd like more clarification or um, kind of more info on. All I know is where were you guys when I was growing up with my son? Because, you know, the CARES program that I work with and this, I'm like... Like I, I'm already thinking ahead to like five families of ours that could use this. And what area are you in? Where do you? I'm, I'm a family support specialist with CARES. But what, what geographic area? Oh, Billings. Oh, Billings. okay. Yeah. So our closest group there would be the Bighorn group, but, um, like I said, if there's people there that you really feel like could fit the mold there, and and we definitely need champions. Like you need at least two good champions that you know can can help get this group off the ground. We can get something going in your area for sure. Because part of our goal is to set these families up with, you know, soft supports because they've got 
X amount of formal supports, but they really don't have, um, like three of them are isolated. They live, they don't even live in town, you know, so they don't, they don't have a chance to meet people. So this would be a really good opportunity for them. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, uh, and I'd be happy to work with you to see if we can get something started there, because I know that as a clinician, when I was practicing family therapy, I remember thinking so much, I wish that I could just give you some friends. Like, I wish I could just hand you a group of people who understood you and what you're going through that you could call when you were in the moment, just like in the struggle. And right. yeah, those soft supports are so, so valuable. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would definitely like more information. Yeah. Um, I'll put my, my email in the chat here. Um, and Let's see here if I can, I'll stop my share so we can go back here. And there's the chat. The trying to photobomb. Oh, is it not working? No, my cat's oh. trying to photobomb. So I am, I have like PTSD about being the Zoom host because I was once holding my daughter at the time was like nine months old or something. And I have a touchscreen computer and she just swiped at while I was the host of the Zoom meeting. And I have no idea where Zoom went and I could not find it. I did not know what she did to my computer. And oh, wow. everyone was a hostage situation. Everyone was stuck. And I was like, I don't even know how to close the meeting, guys. I'm sorry. It was horrible. It was like 20 minutes of just with them watching me panic. Um, I did have a couple questions. Yes, so please. You talked about, is there a curriculum that the groups use or some sort of topic structure? So kind of, um, yes and no. So the every group is run by trained individuals in the model of the program which means you learn like those basic tenets that i talked about you learn kind of the mission and they're taught like how to facilitate a group and they're given examples of kind of topics that you can talk about based on like what your group looks like however um each group is led by the individual. So there's not like a topic that they come to each, each time that they come with a curriculum that's involved. Uh, there's guidance for them, the, the facilitators on how to lead a group and, and how to kind of redirect if the, the topic seems to be uh, like unhelpful or kind of toxic, something like that. Uh, but uh there's not a curriculum that they run off. Some groups have a schedule of guest speakers that they bring in that if you follow their Facebook group, almost every group in Montana, I think every group has a Facebook group that you can search in that area. And they will post ahead of time, like if they have an occupational therapist coming in to talk to people, or if they have a speech therapist coming in, or if they have like a school counselor coming in, or if they have some kind of a guest speaker, which some of them like Missoula, almost every single time has a guest speaker coming in that can kind of be a, a topic for conversation to launch off of. But some groups are really just come in and, and you just form relationships. And it's a really informal situation, but there is a model that they work off of. There's not a set curriculum. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. Um, and then was there child programming? Did you say that for the Yeah, child so there programs? is a book of child programming with kinds of activities and guidelines and training on how to work with kids and how to be a mandated reporter and things like that, um, that they can work off of. A lot of groups just have like a craft or they have um, some kind of a program for the kiddos to um, just play together and do play-based learning. Some of them have a little more formal learning, depending on like what the developmental level of the kiddos is. So for example, for the, the postpartum support group that we run, there's a ton of babies and toddlers. Nothing formal is happening there other than play. Um, and with groups with older kiddos there, and especially kids who have a special health care need, sometimes there's a, a little activity about emotion regulation or, um, identifying your emotions or, or things like that um, but it really is very different from group to group okay but child care is always provided sure do you guys help get that child care or is that the um leader so we so we work with each group leader 
to help them solve any barriers that they're coming up with. And we help them brainstorm the kinds of people they can approach in their community to get as childcare. Um, parent leaders and childcare are given a stipend each time. So they are paid, not like super well, but um, they each get a $30 gift card each time they come. So two parent leaders and two child care providers are given a, a $30 gift card, typically to Amazon, because I could buy those without being sketchy. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're given some compensation for that, but we we do brainstorm with them the kinds of people that they can reach out to. A lot of times like retired teachers in our area really miss interacting with kiddos and have a lot of training working with them. The childcare providers are also trained as well. So we have a childcare uh, training that we do for them where we give them a manual and we teach them about being a mandated reporter and all of that. So there is some training those people get and we do help brainstorm with them, but ultimately the, the soliciting of that child here is up to the group facilitator or leader. Okay. Yeah. And I had a question oh. about the facilitator part. Sorry, Kayla. Um, uh, so they're, they're kind of the organization that anchors it. That's where the group's housed out of the facilitator is trained. Does the facilitator participate in every meeting? Are they, you no. know, there? No, typically they are there as a backup for the parent leaders. Uh, so when I was a facilitator, when I initially started the group, I was a facilitator to start with. And whenever the parent leaders couldn't make it to a group or they needed help or something was going on with their childcare and they needed extra help, sometimes I provided childcare, sometimes I ran and got meals. Sometimes I helped them budget like, okay, if we have this much for dinner each month, um, how can we plan it out? If they needed extra support, if they needed a location. I helped them find a location because initially um, we didn't have, we have an indoor play space now here in Beaverhead County that we opened up after the groups had started. But prior to that, I helped them arrange a local coffee shop that had an area in the back of kids could play that was in a separate room. And I helped set up that. Um, but as a facilitator, I didn't need to be in every group. And sometimes it's not as valuable for the facilitator to be there because they don't have that shared experience. They don't quite get what that feels like. And they can be there certainly in the case that a group leader is unable to make it or needs that support. But uh, but typically their responsibility, responsibility to be there is not as great. They help like print flyers and they help um, connect them to resources in the area and give them brochures and things like that. Okay, thanks. Sorry, yeah. Kayla, go ahead. No, I was just going to kind of, um, I don't know what's going on with my camera. I'm so sorry. I didn't want it to keep flickering on and off and be obnoxious. So, um, so I work with, uh, Beth at, uh, Montana Career Network and, um, and the family division. And we, this was something, a support group was something we were going to start. Um, because I, Beth and I work at the children's clinic, but we also, I know, being a parent to a child with autism alone and then working in the field that I do now, I, I know there's a need. Um, mm -hmm. And so I, there's a lot of parents that um, their kids were going to um, the program at the university and there was, they, so yes, there was childcare provided, but they were in therapy, you know, they were in therapy while they would meet um, and so yeah. I have a couple moms, there's actually two of them because I was going to, I was going to start it and then in hopes, cause you know, it's kind of what Montana Peer Network does is they get those things, you know, the advocacy and the, um, get things started and we want yeah champions to kind of run with it in their yeah. area as well. So I'm wondering if number one, could Montana Peer Network be the does it make sense like can we partner with you guys in a yes. sense it be I could either be the like parent because I do have lived experience yeah um so and, if you wanted to start a group in your area we could definitely work together to do that I okay. know that our funding is the exact same RFP so when I when I applied for the funding for the state it was called peer support services so uh, I know that we serve like the exact same mission, really. Uh, okay. We just have kind of a broader um, network and we provide it only in groups. But yes, absolutely. Yeah. 
Okay. Um, yeah, well then I will definitely, cause all of the things that you're saying, I created a survey, um, and people definitely want it in person and they definitely are more inclined to come if there's childcare. And they also said, um, I believe the most votes were like there to be some sort of topic, but it, an open forum of discussion. So like, it isn't just a, you know, a free for all, not by yeah. So everything you're saying is exactly like what the need and want is in. Um, and yeah, I, there are two moms that would, I think at first I would love to be a part of the groups. So there is a group already running in Missoula, um, run by an individual. His name is JJ blood. And he is actually looking for another parent leader right now. Um, but it, Missoula is large enough. It can certainly support two groups. Uh, I would well, say we're if, in Bill, I'm in Billings. Oh, I thought you said Missoula for some reason. No, I, it's okay. It's okay. Oh yeah. So in Billings, yeah, definitely reach out to me and we'll okay. and start that process for sure. Okay. Awesome. I saved your email. So I will send you an email right now. Perfect. Yeah, that could be beneficial for both of us to work together to get something going in, in Billings. Oh, okay. yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. Billings is certainly large enough that I mean, both of you could probably even start a group and it'd be well attended. Yeah. Well needed and useful. Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, I can already. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and honestly, I think with the different um, entities and outreach that I've done alone, and then also the, um, you know, therapist and uh, whoever I've encountered on my journey you know, with being a a parent alone and then within this field. um, I mean, that was, I think what I was worried about was it more being, is this something more than I can facilitate or handle because I know the need is so great that I, I was a little nervous about like, okay, if I have like two childcare providers, like how many people are going to show up with their like, you know, cause you know, my son alone has autism and, you know, he's very well mannered. But yeah, like someone needs to keep an eye on him or he will run out the door, you know, like, and so I was just thinking about, you know, 20 Bryce's in the room and then what, what would happen if, you know, they're running after. So that was kind of one of my concerns. So I don't know. I'm sure you guys have suggestions. Well, and we do have a little bit more flex that some groups are much larger than others. Some groups, one childcare provider each month is more than enough because they're not bringing in a lot of um, kiddos with high needs or even a lot of kiddos. Um, and some groups uh, like our, our Bighorn group uh, never meets in person. So they're never using that funding for childcare. So there is some flex that for larger groups or groups with greater needs to have more childcare provided that we can fund and support that. Okay, so what if Amy and I, let's just say like Amy and I were the ones that did this together and then let's say we ran because if the need if we find that the need is greater is it something where her and I could do like two separate support groups each month and her and I would support each other kind of because I that's what I'm worried about in this area yeah so I would say for each group to be successful typically they need two parent leaders that are like solid that their people, though they have the lived experience, are not people who are typically in crisis often. Yeah. Um, and I would say that having an extra facilitator as well is another huge factor for group success. So if you have an engaged facilitator who um, can help kind of keep things afloat if one of those group leaders is struggling or those parent leaders is having a time where they need help, um, that's when I've seen the most success. So it would probably be a little bit spreading yourselves too thin to do two groups with just the two of you running it, because that really means that one group has one leader each. And that would be a lot for both of you, because these people are coming in looking to the parent leaders as like someone to help them connect to resources and help them off the clock, you know, like to call every now and then when they need help. And so if you're, if you're doing that alone for one group, that's taxing. That's No, I meant like, like there would be two support groups a month, but Amy and I would run each oh, of like them both. And then I also know two really strong parents, yeah, parents who are not in crisis who are 
who have also been wanting to get this model kind of going so we could yeah I think potentially that could work for sure I would say start with one and see how it explodes and if it seems like the need is too great um then yeah expand for sure and I think that that is something yeah that seems like a model that can be successful Well, and I think um just a little background um my son has autism he's 24 is holding down a full-time job you know he's he's on the road to being able to take care of himself but yeah. i wonder if like kayla if you were a facilitator and i was one of the parent leaders until we boosted people up to that position because um that's part of my job i have a long list of resources and stuff the only thing uh, my son has not had uh happen i guess is he's never had to be flown out of state for treatment or anything so all my resources are in state but i'd be willing to do that you know till we get yeah. somebody boosted up to that position and yeah. that's exactly how we want the groups to look we want it to look like parents empowering other parents to take leadership roles and we encourage groups to have a little bit of a shuffle of leadership every now and then so other group group members can feel empowered to take that position and help other parents and people who've been doing it for a while get some respite from from the right the burden of of that leadership role too yeah, yeah. that sounds exactly well yeah. and then and then amy and i would also be available if someone needs more of that like one-on-one um, yeah support then we could also like through our through our work you know the referral yeah. could come in and yeah we could support that way yeah so. that's a really natural fit yeah for sure okay. so just awesome. just a, a little bit of numbers for you so you can if you are planning on doing this seriously um so there's 65 dollars a month for a meal um that is provided and they do they, it's part of the model to, to feed people when they come because feeding is like an equalizing thing. Like we're all humans, we all eat. Uh, so yeah. you get $65 a month for a meal um, that either you can order or you can um, prepare yourself depending on how many people are coming. The group here in Dillon is quite large. So they have found that they like, they do like crock pot tacos a lot. Um, so uh, depending on what your group looks like, you can either order or to make it yourself. And then there is uh, four gift cards given out each month. So there's two for group leaders and there's two for child care providers. If you have like a group leader that doesn't show up and you end up with like extra cards for some reason, those can be used at your discretion. They're yours to use for that group. So some people use that extra one to give to like a guest speaker. Some people use that extra to um, buy something for their group when somebody needs it. Like if someone passes away, they buy flowers with it or you know, whatever it is. They have that, um, they used to be from Walmart. So you used to could do that. It's harder to buy flowers on Amazon now. But uh, so they, they're, those funds can be saved and kind of used for whatever in that group as well. So that's kind of like the budget of what running the group looks like. Um, and typically we do one training a year and um, it's usually something where we do it in per person and we bring people to a central location. Every time I've done it and I have um, attended it, it's been in Butte area because that has been kind of central to where all of the groups are coming from. And uh, that's usually a one to two day training commitment that we uh, we don't pay you for, but we pay all of your expenses to be there. So like we pay for mileage, we pay for hotel, we pay for food. Okay. How soon are you having a training? So typically we do our trainings in the springtime. So in like March or April, I don't have one on the books yet because I don't have new folks to train that's a large enough group yet to, to train them. I only have two people right now who are kind of on the docket waiting for it. So if I had a couple more, then we could set it up uh, to where uh, I set up the training. And typically um, it's kind of done in conjunction. We also invite all of the other group leaders to come in to share like a network convening experience so that those group leaders can learn from one another on like how they're doing meal planning or how they're finding childcare or how they're solving this issue that's happening in their group. So typically those two events are paired at the same time. Awesome. But I would guess from my schedule right now, we would do it in March or April. And we wouldn't be able, like what if we, got something 
going and then had your guys' support lead or you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, I would do that. Yeah. Especially since you're a peer support, uh, your family peer support and like you already have the skill set to do this okay. the training for you wouldn't be as, as vital. So yeah, okay. I, would, okay. I would absolutely do that. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Any other questions? This was a great topic and a great discussion. Thank yeah, you thank for you. all the information too. Yeah, hopefully it's useful and we can get something going out of it. If we could, yeah, if we could get some groups started, that would be. Yeah, because there's a huge need. Like I said, I could name five families right off the bat. That. Yeah, well, it was already something that we had in the works. And so I yeah. feel like it, um, you know, why, why would I start something when there's already, you know, an organization in the state doing it? And I feel like that's what uh, the kinds of the fields that we're all in is supporting each other and learning from each other. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm glad that I'm glad that you guys were on this because I was like, I no, and I knew I could do it, but I was starting to get a little bit like, oh my God. Oh no. What if, what if I don't, what if I don't have, you know, I don't know. I just, was yeah, well, it's, it's hard to think it, what you're going to do if you have to reinvent the wheel when you start it. So knowing yeah. that there's an existing network and there's an existing like funding source and that there's like a training and things like that, that, that helps. <laughs> yeah. Might as well take advantage. Yeah. And I think yeah. we all work for organizations that would, um, I don't know about be facilitators, but be able to host yeah. You know, so yeah, I think between yeah, Kayla and Amy and the two organizations and I think yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really excited. Well, me yeah. too. Thank you. Thank is you this, so much. Is that something, um, Melissa and Amy, is that something if I make a flyer? Um, is there is it something that you guys can send me your guys' logo? Oh, yeah. Can, okay. Yeah. So I can say like these three affiliates are, you know, bringing a support group to the Billings area just so we can start like kind of putting it. Yeah, out. absolutely. If you okay. reach out to me, I can send you like our branding stuff for when you put the logo on there. Like they just say that you don't say like COP, like, cop. okay. Yeah. So cool. I to write it out. So they just have a few <laughs> like branding standards when you use their logo that I'll send to you if you reach out. Okay. Awesome. I have the email, both your emails right here. I just, I'm just uh, about to send it over. So, and Perfect. Kayla, I just sent my email on the chat too. Awesome. I'm going to put, yeah, I got it. Awesome. Thank you so much, you guys. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Like, it was good a job. good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. It was. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you everybody for coming. Thanks, um, Melissa, for presenting. And yeah, this was a great topic and a great conversation. And I think there'll be a lot that comes from it. So um, with that, everybody have a good rest of the day. All right. Bye. Bye.